Numenera launched eight years ago after a wildly successful Kickstarter and since then has grown with multiple supplements, a revision to its core rules, and an expansion to the existing scope of the game. It has also seen fiction written for its world by Monty Cook and Shauna Germain and has had a few third-party products, a short film, and a fully-fledged computer game developed with Torment Tides of Numenera. It isn't always easy to get into a new RPG, especially if it's a new setting, somewhat of a new genre, and a new set of rules. In this video, I'll guide you through how to get into Numenera as of April 2021 using the free resources Monica Games has put out into the world. This video covers what you need to know to play Numenera in the Cypher system right now, with resources for those who haven't yet purchased the core rules or aren't sure which books they should start with. If you're interested in getting a sense of the setting, later on in the video I'll also mention a free ebook from MCG to give you a sense not only of the canon of this world, but of what's possible with the setting. Released in 2018, Ashes of the Sea is a free Numenera adventure from MCG. The PDF contains the titular adventure, a concise explanation of the rules, as well as a primer on understanding how characters are constructed. Players and GMs should grab both the adventure and the list of pre-generated characters from MCG's website. Links are in the description below. Both players and GMs ought to read the sections titled How to Play Numenera and then Understanding Your Character. The first section will give you a sense of the math Numenera and the Cypher system use to determine success and failure, and the second will show you how characters can interact with that system. I often like to think of Numenera as an asymmetrical game, with a different set of functions for the GM and players respectively. In between the two exists the system's 10 levels of difficulty, where any given task can be rated on a scale of 1 to 10. The GM sets the difficulty and the players use what's available to them to adjust it. Reading How to Play Numenera will break down how to use this system in a game, while understanding your character will explain what options are available to players when it comes to influencing the difficulty, making things easier or more difficult depending on how the character is built and how the player uses the available rules. From there, GMs should read through Ashes of the Sea and prepare to run it. Players should choose what characters from the pregens excite them, though I will caution that the right character type might be a little advanced since it uses some extra mechanics and inventory management that can be a little bit too much to take on all at once. Ashes of the Sea in particular is a fantastic adventure for beginners and offers advice for players who just want to randomly jump into a situation they'll roleplay in, or those who want a bit more build-up leading to the actual start of what the adventure has to offer. There's a core discovery to be had here, one which may force players to take some substantial choices that could affect their lives, as well as those of the NPCs they'll encounter. There's a theme of survival in this adventure, as the players are bound to find themselves in a situation where action is required for their safety and security. This will introduce them to the ways in which the mysterious technologies of the previous worlds, left behind by enigmatic beings who achieved unthinkable levels of technological mastery, still influence the current one. GMs running the adventure as their first experience in Numenera should take care not to define and explain all of the background information they know. Allow your players to naturally move through the setting as defined by the adventure and have them draw their own conclusions and understandings based on the description of the world you provide, not necessarily the definition. After playing through the adventure, GMs ought to consider cataloging all of the ciphers listed on the pre-generated character sheets as separate items, building a small library of these items to populate future adventures with. They should do the same with any creatures or interesting objects they find memorable during the adventure. Players should also keep track of what ciphers they enjoyed using, possibly dedicating a section of their notes to documenting the ones they're likely to seek out again in the future. In 2018, MCG updated the core rules of Numenera, revising a few things and adding some new mechanics to expand the scope of the game. Not everything, however, from the original book made it over. Fortunately, MCG has provided this info in the form of a free download. This PDF includes some additional setting information, some creatures, and four adventures. 
Moving on from Ashes of the Sea, GMs should grab a copy of this document and run some or all of the included adventures using the pregens from Ashes, either as a continuing story or something more episodic. As an important note, the material in the legacy content may refer to two different kinds of ciphers in a very mechanical sense. GMs and players should completely ignore this and treat all ciphers as the same kind of item. Ignore the distinctions between anuetic and occultic ciphers. This rule has since been phased out as it didn't really get used that often. It may also be the case that you'll find references to an older set of rules for armor. Ignore those too. The four adventures from the legacy content provide a number of different opportunities for discovery and narrative development, and unlike Ashes of the Sea, they dip a bit more into the Ninth World's published setting and lore. Characters will get involved with NPCs who have interesting relationships to different organizations and places in the Ninth World, and there's an opportunity for multiple layers of discovery that the GM should leave open for player interpretation. The meanings of some of these mysteries are often more about what the players make of them than what the GM tells them it's about. These were the original adventures that were presented in the first set of rules published back in 2013, and they remain a really great way to bring players into the Ninth World. They can seed character stories with relationships to key locations, and NPCs who can provide the foundation for a much larger adventure or full campaign. These can totally work as episodic installments with new characters each time, or as an ongoing prelude adventure into a substantial Ninth World campaign that uses most of the published material out there. As a final free resource, downloading the Spire of the Hunting Sound will provide GMs with another adventure to run and another set of pre-generated characters for players to try out. As a note, the characters in this document have likely used some slightly outdated rules in their construction, but the overall function of them is identical. As with the legacy content, there may be a few mentions to a different set of rules for ciphers and armor. Ignore these and just follow what is outlined in Ashes of the Sea where it pertains to the rules of the game. The Spire of the Hunting Sound is a pretty meaty adventure, which may last for more than a few sessions and can really serve as a great conclusion to this little prelude of free MCG-created adventures. As always, GMs should mine this adventure for ciphers, creatures, and even NPC templates, and players should be encouraged to document interesting stories and character developments. Everything mentioned thus far is not only free, but will provide a group with over a month's worth of Numenera adventures if you play each one once a week. Six adventures, nine character pregens, and a good chunk of ciphers, creatures, oddities, and more should be enough to give you a sense of whether this game is a right fit for you. There's a lot to discover in just these experiences, and the core books and supplements will either provide you with more material to play through or more material to shape interesting narratives and discoveries of your own. If you want to get more into the setting and understand the Ninth World as MCG frames it in their in lore writings and fiction, I do recommend checking out the free ebook, The Amber Monolith. This story appears in the main core book and details not only the thematic nature of this setting, but also provides a little bit of lore for those interested in jumping fully into the setting as MCG has framed it in their books. Overall, I would suggest that Numenera is not really a lore-heavy setting that requires hours spent with exposition dumps to really get into the game. The basic premise of it taking place a billion years into the future after the rise and fall of great civilizations who left their technological achievements scattered throughout the world to be used and repurposed by a young human civilization is enough. The setting as it's presented in Numenera's fiction and published adventures often exists as a kind of speculation in some ways as to the kind of society that might develop in this setting and with this premise. There's a tremendous amount of freedom the setting affords you, and the Amber Monolith will give you a little bit of background as to the origin of one of the setting's largest organizations, and what you do with this information and how you frame that organization is largely up to you. If working with this material and playing Numenera is a good fit for you and your group, 
The next step is to get into the core rules, that being Numenera, Discovery, and Destiny. In a future video, I'll discuss the differences between these books and what their relationship is to previous Numenera rules and supplements, and whether getting both is best for the type of experience you want, or if it makes sense instead to possibly pair Numenera Discovery with something like the Cipher System rulebook. For now, getting into that is a little bit outside the scope of this video, but know that there's a lot of freedom when it comes to how you want to play Numenera and that sticking to the rules and setting as they're presented isn't the only way to play and experience this game. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you found it helpful, please consider subscribing to The Infinite Construct for more Numenera videos.